crisis center. Right. You know, and just be like a normal person on the street. I don't think that's going to happen in our lifetime. If we can teach that to our kids, we don't feel about it, right? You know, we're going to change the world. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, so it's hard enough to get, or it's hard enough in this life to really get it together and make things um, work living a sober lifestyle. So why consume drugs and alcohol in excess? You really have um, no chance. No. Like, I know that you, I know that people kind of work nine to five during the week, go out on the weekends, and that's kind of your release. I get that. Right. But if you're, I mean, we can get into this whole thing about why you don't love your job and you feel that, you need right. that escape. But um, the main thing that I, that I want to touch base on there is that are you going to actually relieve stress or, right. and even then, are you relieving anxiety? Like, is this a way that you're going to be medicating and self-medicating? Because that's, guess what? Everything that you're running away from is going to be even worse the next day. Oh, hundred percent. I always think like, if you hate your job that, that much, do you got to drink crazy amounts on the weekend? Get a new job. Yeah. Sure. Please, it's not worth it. Job. Like, is it worth it's it? It's not I mean, worth starting, you know? I, I, I'm a big believer that like, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life, Me right? Too, man. I'm grateful that I got a job that I love. Like, yeah. I'm so great because I don't work. I feel like I don't work. I feel like I just live my life, right? Yeah. I think at the end of the day, if I was in a job that I hated, like I would hate to be like a bank teller. I, no I mean, offense, no yeah. Offense I know you don't But I would, Some I mean, people love it. It's just not I would for just you. hate to be a bank teller. Yeah. You know, like I wouldn't find any enjoyment in that at all. Like at all. And I think that... Thank God I'm not a bank teller. Right. And I know that. I have enough self-awareness to know that that's not the job for me, right? Right. I think if you hate your job that much, you have to medicate and numb out. There's another job out there for you. There's something better for you. Yeah. And you're just not, you're not following your heart. Right. You're not being true to what, what it is your passion you're, about. You're just getting satisfied, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just getting satisfied. Um, a lot of this is about making a real conscious decision that you want to change. We're talking again about cutting out alcohol. Mm -hmm. So make that conscious decision that you want to change. If you really do want to change, people say they want to change all the fucking time. Yeah. But they don't because the, your actions speak louder than your words and you're doing the same fucking thing you do every other weekend. Or I like the people You're at the say, same bar stool. Right. I love the people that are like, oh yeah, I got sober. Yeah. Oh yeah, what did you do last night? When you got trashed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's only just this time this week. Yeah. Oh, well, you got sober. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think sobriety means like a lifestyle shift for me. Absolutely. So sobriety and recovery is life and death. Yeah. If I drink again, I'm more than likely going to die. I'm, I got a pretty, you know, it's probably about 98, 99% that I'm going to die if I drink again. Really? And I... You're just enough, knowing that is enough to, obviously. Enough to not... And not from anything, I think... That my mental illnesses, if I drank again, my mental illnesses would get the best of me. Right. And I'm just not willing to risk that. Well, you know why they call them spirits, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. they say, I mean, this is obviously, it could be crazy witchcraft. Right. But, um, they, say, they say, I read this article not too long ago, I think I posted on the Sex and Suicide site, actually. But um, they say that they're called spirits because back upon, like back in the whatever day and age it was... They believed that as soon as you drank, you were easily taken over by spirits, yeah. not necessarily good ones. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you already have a mental illness, you're probably dealing with some demons yeah. in there. And yeah. alcohol can amplify, and drugs can amplify yeah. whatever, whatever's going on. Um, the good news about people with anxiety and depression is they seem to <coughs> want to get better. <coughs> Bless your, excuse you, buddy. Sorry, buddy. It's okay. This is because it's such a painful um, condition which eventually, or actually makes it easier to treat than alcoholism, as we've talked about. If you have an addictive personality type, you need to make a conscious effort to end that addiction, whether it's drugs, alcohol, or negative thinking. So even the anxiety that we've talked about, if it's um, if, if you're addicted to the bad behavior of negative thinking, if you are constantly beating yourself up, if you're worrying, if you're feeling, feeling guilty, we've gone over the fact that these are bad habits that you need to break, and we've talked about how to break those. You'll have right. to tune into previous episodes if you don't know what the hell we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just as addictive as a drug or um, self-medicating is your way that you think. Some people are so addicted to chaos that like, when it's not chaotic, they need to create it. That's anxiety too, though, you because know, like you can't sit still. You can't sit still, right? Yeah. I just think like... I'm a drama free guy. I just don't like drama yeah. and so like I don't like I'm not a big fan of chaos or conflict because right. I kinda went through a lot of that as a kid, like yeah. in my in my house and it freaked me out. So I like I don't ever wanna like 
you know, scrap in front of my kids or like, right. I don't want to abandon my kids. Do you know what I mean? And I think a lot yeah. of that stems from a long time ago, but at the same time, I don't know if that'll ever happen. I right. don't know if I would allow that to ever happen just yeah. from, from where I am in life, right? And I think a lot of that stems from being anxious. Yeah. You know, maybe I drank a lot and I scrapped a lot. I yeah, fought a too. lot when I was... I yeah. didn't win a lot of fights either. <laughs> I, I won a lot of fights on the ice. Yeah. You kept me in a bar, I was getting... My it's just hands. different though. It's yeah. totally different. Bar fights are not... Because I just swing like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. It's crazy when you look back on some of this. I, I honestly, I believe that back when I was drinking a lot, I did think I, I created chaos. You created yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I created it for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I can take responsibility for that now. And a lot of the things that happened to me that I blamed on other people, fuck, man. Like, it was my... I attracted that. Yeah, like, if oh, you yeah. want to talk about the law of attraction, yeah. um, I was complaining. I was drinking. I was hanging out with all the wrong kinds of people. Yeah. I was using drugs. I, you know, I, was, I always had them available for right. people. So, yeah, of course, there's going to be drama that comes with that, that kind of lifestyle. And, and why, why when we're younger, we think that's cool. I, I, there's nothing cool about it. No. It really I, isn't. I don't know. Maybe it's fucking Hollywood or something. Yeah. But, like, it's too much energy, I think. you got to waste so much energy on being, like, chaotic, right? you got to waste so much energy. And if you just kind of live yeah. in the moment or in a peaceful kind of state... Yeah. You get to save that energy up for where it's really needed. You know, love. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to love your friends. You get to, you know, you get to love what you eat. You get to yeah. love where you live. Yeah. If you're not always in that negative, like you say, you know, like people being addicted to that negative thinking. Yeah. That's, yeah. That can be fatal. Oh, it can Ultimately, be. Ultimately, that can be fatal, you know? And I remember, like, if I think back, um, I can probably tell you that uh, I wanted people, because I was so emotionally weak, and I didn't know what I was dealing with, the anxiety and depression, or I didn't like want to admit that I was yeah. dealing with it, and it was my own struggle. Yeah. I didn't yeah. mind people thinking I was crazy and going to snap and right. beat the shit out of them, or get into a fight, whatever. You'd keep them at bay. At you know? least if they thought I was crazy, they wouldn't attack me emotionally, right? right? Yeah, and that was like my defense mechanism. Defense is putting up a wall. Yeah, sure. and it's something that you know you, you look back and you're not proud of, but you, you can say, oh, you know, I've come a long way yeah, since then. Yeah, for sure. And don't get me wrong, people still piss me off. Oh yeah. And and I still get heated over over things that I probably shouldn't. Yeah. But Progress, at the end of the day, not perfection, man. Yeah, and Progress. at the end of the day, I wish I could be like you know, um, if if you believe in religion at all, I mean, I I don't even really want to go there, but this, you know, Jesus Christ, for example. Right forgave everyone for, for mistreating him. Right. I wish I could do that, but I don't want to let people, you know, step on me. Right, you don't, want to be a, you don't want to be a doormat. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we've got to find a little bit of balance in there. Yeah. As much as I think that every situation can be resolved in a loving way as opposed to an aggressive way, I still get angry. I, I still think get the aggressive. biggest person that we all have to forgive is ourselves. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, we've done some shady things, mm -hmm. and we got to forgive ourselves because we're human. Yeah. And if we put ourselves on this pedestal that we got to be perfect, yeah. we're going to bust our expectations every time, right? right. And we're just human. Yeah. And we've we're, talked about that. Yeah. Bro. Like we've talked about the um, the potential risk of perfectionist thinking. Yeah. yeah. And how that yeah, can fuck you up. Oh, yeah. man. Big time. So, big time. Um, <coughs> gradual reduction is the best way to cut back on anything, whether it's drugs, alcohol, uh, or, or prescription medication. Uh, like Paul was saying earlier, do not cut that shit cold yeah, turkey yeah. it's not a good way to do things so any kind of um relief whether it's medication drugs alcohol yeah. uh come it's back slowly gradual, yeah. yeah gradual and if back. you're and if you need like you know if you need detox that's yeah. a that's a medical way to de to detox is going to a facility if that's what right. you need you know they'll do it gradually for you or if they you know when you when i went to a detox I, I had to stop right then, but I knew that I was going to be safe if I had a seizure. There was doctors right there. Right. You know what I mean? I was right. right there that if, if things did go south quick, yeah. that those people were right there, right? I wasn't mm -hmm. on the street. I wasn't, uh, you know, and I needed to be medically detoxed. I, the first time I was in detox for 14 days in Hamilton, yeah. like coming mm -hmm. off heroin and crystal meth and all this stuff, just because I could not, I couldn't do it. Like, I just couldn't do it. So I walked into, to a, well, I got kind of got sentenced into a, into uh, the 14 to, days? Yeah, into 14 days, and then I went to treatment for 55 days. Did they say that it was 14 days, or did, is that kind of... That's the you, longest in Ontario that, that you can, can stay? stay? Yeah, it's 14 days. Okay, so you obviously really needed a bad plan, or whatever you want to call that. I was in, like, in detox, 
here's a little insight into detox centers if people don't know you go into like an observatory for the first three days because your first three days of coming off anything alcohol drugs eating gambling whatever your addiction is your mind is as has gone into another state because it's so used to having you know those drugs and alcohol so your mind your brain your body is right uh, going into these into shock almost and so you're in these observatory rooms or every detox center that i've ever been in is uh, you go into these um, like observatory rooms and and people watch you right all day long right like, and it's not like a zoo but they're there to watch you to make sure that nothing bad happens and i mean the first when i was in hampton the first three days i just laid in this thing sick as a dog puking all over the place so people were watching you throw people up all over me. the place yeah. and but i mean at, this, at that point i just for your safety it's meant for, for my safety someone was going to watch me puke on the street yeah or i can puke in a hospital yeah, yeah, or they might cool. film you and put it on YouTube. Right, right. And these people actually have your health. They're, yeah, and they're going to, like, rehydrate you. Yeah, they're going to give you some fruit. They're going to, you know, make sure that you're okay. Yeah. And if you're not okay, they they can take you right there. Right. You know, like, if you right. need to, to go in and get medically detoxed, you can go right there. Right. I think it's a very safe option, too. I don't think anyone should ever feel harm that if they've been in detox for 14 days, don't feel shame in that. No. Like, you, you probably need that, right? I definitely needed it. Yeah. Oh, I needed it bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what would you say that your message is to someone right now that's, that could potentially be watching and needs detox? Like, I, do you think that they're feeling like they don't need detox? Do you think that they're feeling like they'd be ashamed to go to detox? I don't think that there's... I think, uh, for me personally, I think detox is the, the first step to my freedom. Right. You know, like, it was the first step to say... I, I don't know how else to stop. I got to go to, to somewhere and stop. And these people have what I need to stop. Right. And that's, I think for me now, looking back, I probably didn't think that way going through it. But hindsight, I look back and I think that was the first step to my freedom. Right. It was really just putting the plug in the jug. And I couldn't do that on my own. Mm -hmm. I tried so many times to do that on my own. And I needed someone else to show me a different way to live. Right. You know, when I got that through people at detox at treatment at meetings at therapy groups at, for my counselor i've like put that all into my toolbox now right, right. they taught me how to open up my toolbox like yeah. they gave me the tools and taught me how to open that up and it's all up to me to use those tools right you can have a toolbox full of greatness but yeah. no one's holding a gun to my head saying you have to go play guitar because you're anxious right you know right. what i mean you gotta have some self-awareness yeah that um you know if you're feeling anxious go try what you, what works best for you to, to get less anxious go help someone yeah you know like yeah. Go, go and help someone i think it really helps to help and especially in those situations i'm not saying if you're um using every day and you feel like you need detox to go help someone you know what i mean i'm saying yeah. that um you know once you go through that uh the detox phase which i'm not going to sugarcoat it it's hell yeah but it's necessary right, right? it's like right. a self-care thing self-care is not selfish right it's necessary we right. need other humans to care for ourselves and i think and others and others yep. for sure if we're not taking care of ourselves it's we're doing an injustice to, our, to other people right mm -hmm. we're doing an injustice to ourselves but at the same time you know as soon as you get through that detox the shitty phase it does get better right it really right. does well, look at you the rough yeah i couldn't believe it i didn't have any you know i think i didn't have any teeth in my face i was living in my car with a yeah. negative negative attitude and now I get to, you know, do what I do and, and speak all, and over, enjoy all life. over the country. And I, and I get to enjoy life, right? right? I get to wake up and enjoy enjoy everything that happens. Right. right? I'm very grateful. I always say, like, st seriously, if you're struggling, stop and smell the roses. Yeah. Go to, a, go to a flower garden and smell those roses. Right. You know? Literally do it. Literally stop sure. and smell those roses and you'll be grateful. Yeah. You know, you yeah. really will be. I don't know what flowers have in them, but every time I see, like, a big flower garden, I stop and I smell them. Just yeah to be grateful for the moment, right? Sure. Look, yeah, look, no, that's a great one. I mean, we use a lot of cliche stuff like this yeah. too shall pass, yeah. um, you know, hang in there and, yeah. and stop and smell the roses. And as much as we use those as metaphors, you can actually do this I shit. Did, yeah, yeah I did, why I not? Them, yeah, like I, I, I There is some truth there, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, there's a total truth there, They're actually. just gaining little victories, right? That's yeah. all it is. It's like, a, you know, those little victories that you get every day that like, you stop and smell the rose and you say, God, I haven't smelled a you know, rose like that for a long time. That's right. a little victory right. that you get to take with you for all day. Yeah. All day long. Yeah. So you're struggling at some point, you get to say, wow, like I had a really right. cool, well, if you want, right? That's a lot of Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, absolutely. absolutely. Right? You, yeah. Can not, you can forget about those roses and still be in a struggle. Yeah. It's not going to get you out of the struggle, <laughs> you know? 
I just forgot about the roses. Just go smell the roses. <laughs> I'm gonna get you some roses. I, mean, I forgot. I know. I'll get you daisies or something. Um, depression is something we really need to be more open to discussing.